Hey guys, it is Monday here in West Virginia, and we are doing our Mopar Monday as regular, but with a, something a little different, we're looking at some Jeep Wrangler Unlimiteds today. They're Mopars, and they're even in high impact colors. This is like a high impact, I don't know, I guess I could refer to it as kind of like a Hemi Orange. I'm not sure what they call it now, if it's like Go Mango. Um, they had Go Mango and Hemi Orange. This may be more like the Go Mango. Let me see what they call it here on the, ah, on the Outer World package, you're calling it Crush, like Orange Crush. So, maybe it is a shade different. To me, it just reminds me of like Go Mango, Hemi Orange, something like that. So, we got two Jeeps here, pretty much the same, lacking a year or two. The Outer World is a 2013 the green light is a 2010. Um, but same colors pretty much. The trims, uh, the trim packages are a little bit different. This one is a little bit more elaborate, I think. This is your Wrangler Unlimited Moab Edition. And this is just your standard 2010 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. So, I'm not sure which one is, like, a little fancier than the other, or it was just because of different years. They had different trim packages and such. Uh, I can say one thing with the trim package on the green light that I favor over the Auto World one is the color-coded flares. I know some people like black flares on, like, wide-body stuff. I like the color match to your paint color look. That's just my opinion. Um, but on the Outer World, I like the color matched roof over the black roof. So there's little differences that I like in their trim packages. But what I wanted to do is get something pretty similar in the, uh, in the year and also try to get it in the same color and such, which we pretty much nailed that. And I got lucky and found both of these at Walmart around the same exact time. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the green light first, because we have not done a green light Jeep on my channel before. So this is from their Hollywood series. From the Cold Pursuit, uh, Revenge is best served cold. And actually, I found the other car in this, I think it's Series 40 or something. Yeah, Series 40, Hollywood Series. The other Cold Pursuit vehicles in there, and it is a uh, Interceptor Utility, kind of like a Ford Explorer, Ford Escape SUV. And I got it, but it was the Blue Chase. It had blue wheels and blue chassis. So I got lucky and found the Chase variant in that case, and then I found this guy. Uh, it also had the Grease Cars and uh, the Home Improvement 48 Ford Deluxe. And I kind of wish I would have picked those up too, but I didn't. Passed on them, and when I went back the next day, they were all gone. Except for this guy. He was still waiting there for me. <laughs> because all the, I picked up the first day was the chase, but I went back, and he was there. And I figured, you know what? What the hell? I'll get it and do the comparison video I've been wanting to do. Because the Outer World Jeep I had had for a while. So, taking a look at it just kind of gives you... What the Cold Pursuit movie kind of background looked like through the entire movie, it was kind of like that. I think it takes place in Alaska, so trees, snow, and all of that stuff. Um, on the back, it gives you a little bit of an insight on the movie itself, but what's weird, I don't think they give you one picture of where the Jeep is in the movie. They show you the Humvee, uh, some plow truck, and then whatever vehicle he was driving, whatever car that was, but... It sells Nell Coxman's Quiet Life as a snowplow driver comes crashing down when his beloved son dies under mysterious circumstances. His search for the truth soon becomes a quest for revenge against a psychotic drug lord named Viking. Coxman unwittingly sets off a chain of events that includes a kidnapping, a series of deadly misunderstandings, and a turf war between Viking and a rival boss. It was a decent movie. Um, not like one of Liam Neeson's best movies, but it was not bad. So let's get this guy out and take a look at him. <clears throat> and throw the package to the side here. 
and get that out of the way. So here is your green light Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Let me see here on the door. Yeah, there's already a little paint flaw there. So you have a little tiny scratch. Um and such so that's one thing like green light sometimes their quality control lacks now this it kind of looks like an opening hood but the hood does not open on it they may have on the older models but on this one i think it is riveted shut nice detail on the front painted headlights your jeep emblem the gray insert for the bumper fog lights there on the bumper chassis detail is so so uh it's got a little bit of detail here with the transfer case and a little bit of a tranny and some with the exhaust but very very primitive looking and as you can see that they have this little area here that they put on all the bases now where you could add a hitch to it has the detailed spare which were the real rubber tire Detailed tail lights with detailed plate and your handles and straps and brackets for the spare. Uh, but the only thing I can say, these seven spoke wheels did not come on this Jeep um, unless it was a different package. But the ones in the movie just had that standard Jeep Wrangler five spoke looking wheel on it like the one on the... Auto World, except the Auto World ones is a little newer. I think it has like a split five spoke. The ones in 2010 were more of like a solid five spoke. So not sure where they got the wheels from. And the tires are a little bit low profile sidewall compared to like what's on most of the Jeeps. And it does have side mirrors, which is cool. And they are casted into the body so they will not break off has etched mirrors and such and one thing cool about this it has the removable hard top which in outer world you don't get that but there is no roll cage in it but it does have the removable roof and such nicely detailed interior and such and that pretty much wraps it up for your green light. So, the one thing it has over the Auto World is a removable roof. Okay, so, moving on to the Auto World. So, this is the first release of our Jeep Wrangler with its newly bodied power bulge hood. Ah, cool. So it's got a different bulge hood. That's pretty sweet that they take into consideration these little things. So Moab, Utah um, hosts the annual Moab Easter Jeep Safari. It's the ultimate off-road adventure joined by Jeep and 4x4 enthusiasts worldwide. Pretty cool to know. So that's where the Moab package came from. So, this one may have a little more details to it and options than the regular limited. And then, as I said, it's three years old difference, too. So, let's get this guy off the card and take a look at him. And the other counterpart to this, this is release... Um, release, what's this? Release A. So, I do have release B also. And it's done in, like, a subline... Sassy Grass Green, and we'll unbox that one day on a Mopar Monday or just an unboxing free of Friday, something like that. So, looking at this guy, the tires, in my opinion, are more correct with that sidewall height. Even though it is a package and it may be lifted a little bit, I think the standard Jeep had a much higher profile on the wheel or on the tire than that. And even the diameter of the wheel looks a little bit too small on the green light. So, you have molded in mirrors, once again, cool feature, you have the wiper detail, unfortunately no lift off rough, you have your full size spare, there's a rubber tire, detailed tail lights, and you have detailed rear bumper, license plate frame, with no license plate on it, 
kind of strange. Usually, they always have these license plates. Now, the center of this bumper is not painted silver, but some of the trim packages had it where it was painted black or silver, so that I can't really say much about, that they lack detail. The grills on these are... Uh, let me see, seven slats on the 13, and then there are, oh, seven slats on the 10. Um, in my opinion, and I may be wrong about this, the Auto World seemed a little bit narrow to me. Even, like, their Buick Wagon seems a little bit narrow. It's not all on all their castings. I think just a couple, so... This may be a little bit narrow, or this may be a little bit wide, because I think in the 80s and 90s, these were a little bit wider, and I think Green Light tries to save money and kind of alters their existing uh, molds and retool stains and stuff, so this may be more accurate. It may be a little bit narrower. The 2010s and newer, this may have kind of more of a front end off of an older one that was just modded to have some kind of like bumper and grill look for the 2010 model and then the side details pretty much are the same but the chassis this is where Outer World kills it. All that detail on the chassis is just beautiful. They have the ladder frames, they have um Transfer case, transmission, exhaust, all the cross members. The rear differential and the front differential has a lot more detail to it and such. They even have the like skid plate coming off the bumper, whereas the other one doesn't. Now, that could be a new option on 13 versus 10. I don't know. But the tires on the Auto World... I don't know if they're a little narrow, in my opinion, but the ones on the green light seem a little bit wide because of the fact that it is a low-profile tire. But anyways, the tires pretty much would be accurate on either one because of the wheel size and such. And then the selling part over the Auto World over the green light is the detailed engine compartment with the opening hood. And I think that beats the liftoff hood or liftoff roof. So I'd much rather have the detailed engine with the opening hood than the liftoff roof. So if I was picking a winner out of these two, I would pick Auto World, obviously. But overall, they're both pretty nice. Uh, but as I said, they really. I know slacked on the wheels and tires on the green light one. I think they should have done something better went with a stock Jeep wheel. Because I kind of tried to catch pictures of the real one from the movie. And it really looks like the one in the movie had the stock Wrangler wheels on it. Not the seven spoke things. So, I don't know. It may have later on in the movie or in some shots. You know how they do in this Hollywood. Sometimes they have different wills and different scenes. And they don't even realize they're doing it. So, that could be the case too. I don't know. But, anyways, I think Auto World wins it. That's my opinion. So, hope you guys enjoyed this competitive comparison Mopar Monday. We'll be back again tomorrow to do a Truckin' Tuesday. So be sure to tune back in and watch that. Thanks for watching and enjoy your Monday.